Hello and welcome to today's lesson on polygons and other plane figures. This is going to be the first part of two videos that covers the topics under standard 2.3 and then also the polygons and other plane figures lesson in Study Island. So I'm excited that you're here and these questions that we go over today you can see about four of them on your EOI. And they're going to cover things such as polygons, so like what the shapes are called, triangles, quadrilaterals, etc. Perimeter and area formulas. And those formulas, those are ones that you're just going to have to have memorized. So you can add those to your flashcards um, that I've asked you to start to set up for all those vocabulary words that you're learning. And remember also, you should be taking notes. And if I go too fast or too slow, you can... Um, rewind and fast forward so that you can stay with us. And then also, if I'm working at a problem, feel free to pause it, um, see how far you can get, and then watch how I do it so you can compare where you're at and how the video is going. Um, so that I'm excited that you're here, and let's go ahead and look at our lesson. First, let's define what a polygon is. So the definition is a simple closed plane figure made up of three or more line segments, so straight sides, and it's closed. So characteristics is it's closed, so it's simple, curve does not intersect itself, so they don't have intersecting lines, and it's 2D. So examples are your rectangle, triangle, pentagon, trapezoid, hexagon. And things that are not a polygon, so non-examples, are circles, cones, arrow, or ray, cube, the letter A. Those are all not polygons. We also have specific polygons. We have a regular polygon, which is a special polygon that has equal sides and equal angles. So if you are told, hey, that's a regular pentagon, or that's a regular quadrilateral, you know that every single side has the same measure. They're all congruent, and you know that every angle is congruent. They all have the same measure. So polygons are either going to be convex or concave. A convex polygon is all the interior angles, so that means these angles right here, are less than 180 degrees. And if it's a regular polygon, it's going to be convex. So all of the angles... One way I look at it is all of the angles are pointing out. In a concave polygon, some of the interior angles are more than 180 degrees. That's this angle right here is what makes it concave. And see how that angle's pointing into the shape? It's caving in. That's one way I remember that what a concave polygon is. And then depending on how many sides and angles a shape or a polygon has, we use that to name it. So a triangle is one that has three sides and three angles. A square or a quadrilateral, oh, a square is a type of quadrilateral, it has four corners and four sides. We have a pentagon has five, hexagon has six, heptagon has seven, octagon has eight, Nonagon has 9, and Decagon has 10. And here, they show you an example of every polygon, a regular one and an irregular one. The yellow ones are your regular, and your blue ones are your irregular ones. And so with the quadrilateral and the triangle, they have special names. Equilateral triangle, that's your regular triangle. Square, that's your regular quadrilateral. So just to show you some different examples of each type of polygon. You're going to want to know these names, have them memorized, know that a nonagon is nine sides, a heptagon is seven sides, etc. And we also have this formula down here that helps us to calculate how many degrees each of these polygons has. So meaning if I add up how the angle of all the corners of the vertexes, then I am going to get that same number no matter what it is. So if I take these three angles and add them up in a triangle, and I take these three angles of the irregular triangle and add them up, I'm going to get the same number. 
and that works for every shape. Um, so I'm going to show you how this formula works. So you have 180 and the N is how many sides it has. So a triangle has three sides. So I would take 3 minus 2, which is 1, times the 180. That means a triangle has 180 degrees. Okay, a quadrilateral has four sides. So I take 4 minus 2, which is 2, and then 2 times 180 is 360. So every quadrilateral's vertices add to 360. And in the pentagon, the sum of the angles in a pentagon is 540 degrees. The sum of the angles in a hexagon is 720 degrees. The sum of the pentagon, or the sum of the angles in a heptagon is 900 degrees. The sum of the angles in an octagon is 1,080 degrees. The sum of the angles in a nonagon is 1,260 degrees. And then the sum of the angles in a decagon is 1,440 degrees. And I got all of these numbers using this formula. This is a formula you're going to want to have memorized because we're going to need it for the following questions. Some of the questions are going to be as easy as just knowing how many vertices or sides go with which shape. So a polygon with six vertices is a... Which one has six sides and six corners? That's going to be your hexagon. This one asks, which one has four vertices? See how simple these are? You just have to know, okay, the one with four sides and four angles, that's called a quadrilateral. This question asks, which of the following polygons appears to be a regular polygon? Well, I have to know the definition of regular in order to solve this question. Regular means that all the sides are the same size and all of the angles are the same size. So which one of these has those characteristics? We okay, have the pentagon, this side and this side are different measures, different sizes, so it's not X. Um, in Z here, this angle is bigger than this angle. This one's obtuse and this one's acute. So it's not going to be Z. The angles aren't the same measure. And then same thing in Y. This is a right angle, it looks like, and this is an acute angle. So those aren't going to be the same measure. But W, the sides all look the same measure. They all look the same size, and all of the angles look the same size. So W is going to be my answer. Which of these appears to be an irregular polygon? Well, irregular means not regular, so different sizes for the sides and angles. And I look here at Y, these are longer, and this one is definitely shorter. So these ones are, the sides are definitely different sizes. So Y is my irregular polygon. Number nine here says, which of the following correctly describes a concave polygon? Well, here I just have to know the definition of a concave polygon. The concave polygon we went over in the beginning is the one that has an angle that is greater than 180 degrees. Well, I have two here that say greater than 180 degrees, but this one says at least one, and this one says each interior angle. And if we think back to the definition, it doesn't have to be each interior angle. I don't even think that's possible. So it's going to be B. Find the measure of one interior angle of the regular polygon shown below. So I have a regular polygon, it tells me, so I know that each angle is the same measure. And I need, so first, I'm going to have to calculate how many ang, what is the sum of all of the measures of the angles in a pentagon. So this pentagon has five sides, so I'm gonna put a five minus two in here. I'm using this formula that I showed you in the notes. And then five minus two is three. So I have an 180 times three, which is, this is equal to 540. Now that's the sum of all five angles. And wants to know one interior angle. 
And since I know it's regular, I know all five of these are exactly the same. So I can just divide this by five. And 540 divided by five is 108. So that means each of these angles here is 108 degrees. So my answer is A. Some other types of questions you could see in this section are area, perimeter, and circumference questions. So we ha need to know those formulas in order to answer those questions. And sometimes they give us those formulas on the problem in, on the EOI and sometimes they don't. So here I have the area of a trapezoid is area equals one half or you could use 0.5 times the height times the sum of the bases. So the height is how far apart the two parallel sides are and the bases are the lengths of those parallel sides. You have the area and circumference of a circle. The area is how much space it takes up and the circumference is how long around the circle. And so circumference is two times pi times r where the radius is what r stands for and the area is pi times radius squared. We also have the area of a triangle, which is equal to one half times base times the perpendicular height, um, or you often see that written as one half base times height with the B and the H. And so your base is the side that the height is perpendicular to. Perpendicular meaning it makes a right angle and your height is how far it is from the base to the opposite side. And then you have the area and perimeter of a rectangle, area still being the space it takes up and perimeter being how long it is around the rectangle. And so our perimeter formula is two times the width plus two times the length or you can just add up all the sides. Either way works. And then area is width times length. So here Alyssa bought a bedside table whose top is in the shape of an equilateral triangle. Each edge of the triangle is 38 centimeters long. What is the approximate area of the top of Alyssa's bedside table? So first I'm going to draw a picture of what the top of her table looks like. So I tried to create a triangle that had equal sides. And so each of the edges of the triangle are 38 centimeters long. So I'm going to go ahead and label these all 38. What is the approximate area of the top of this table? Well, I need to know what the base and the height are. So if I draw in the height here, I don't know what that is. I know that my base is 38, but I don't know the height. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to calculate that. And I'm going to do that using Pythagorean theorem. So, and I can use Pythagorean theorem because this half of a triangle is a right triangle. So I'm going to be looking for this side here, and we can call that H. You can call it A. I'm going to use A because the Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And then because this is an equilateral triangle, I know my height breaks this up into 19 and 19. And that's going to be my B. And then my hypotenuse, the one across from the right angle, is 38, which is my C. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that into my formula for Pythagorean theorem. So I have A squared, what I'm looking for, plus the B squared, which is a leg, is 19 squared equal to 38 squared my hypotenuse. And then I just have to work that out. So 19 squared is 361. And I still have that a squared added to it at the beginning. And then 38 squared is 1,444. I subtract 316 from both sides. And they cancel out here, and that leaves me with a squared equals 1,083. And then this is still a squared. To undo squaring, the opposite of that is to take the square root. So that cancels out the square, and I have to do it to both sides. 
and that leaves me with a equals, and I have to do that on the calculator, and that gives me 32.91. So I now know that this height is 32.91, so I can go over to my area formula for a triangle, one half times base times height, and I have one half times, now I know my base now we go back to the whole base of this triangle because then we're finding the area of this entire triangle is 38. And I have a height of 32.91. And so I just multiply, and if you're using a calculator, you could do 0.5 instead of a half. So 0 0.5 times 38 times 32.91, and that's going to be an area of... 625.27, which is letter A. All right, this question says, April wants to add a ribbon border to the circular rug in her living room. If the area of her rug is 28.26 square feet, how long does the ribbon need to be? So oftentimes they will give us an area and ask for the circumference or give us the perimeter and ask for the area. So we have to be able to work from one formula to the other. So we know that the area here equals to 28.26. We also know that the area of a circle is pi radius squared. Pi standing for 3.14, which it tells us to use here. So that means that it wants to know how long does the ribbon need to be. So if she's putting the ribbon along the outside of her circular rug, that means it wants to know how long is it around the rug. That's how much ribbon she's going to be. That's going to be the circumference is what we're looking for. So in order to find circumference, that's 2 pi r. I need to know radius in order to find circumference. So my first step is going to be to solve for the radius, which I can do by working the area formula backwards. I can set the area equal to pi radius squared. So pi, it tells me to use 3.14 for that. So I'm just going to write 3.14 in for pi. And now I'm going to solve. So my first step is going to be to Divide both sides by 3.14, and these cancel. 28.28 divided by 3.14 is 9.09, I'm sorry, 9.01, and that equals radius squared. So I almost have it equal to r, but I have this squared. The opposite of squaring is taking the square root. And I have to do that to both sides to keep it balanced. The square and the square root cancel, and I'm left with just r. And the square root of 9.01 rounds to 3.00, or just 3. And now that I know the radius, I can go over here and plug it into my circumference formula. 2 times pi, or 3.14. times 3, and when I work that all out, I get a circumference of 18.84, which is letter C. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you learned something new.